You know, I've been waiting to do this comparison. OnePlus 11R versus iQ Neo 7 Pro. Of course, the nothing phone 2 came in between and put a spanner in the works of all my plans. But here we are, finally. Let's figure out which one of these two should you buy. Should you buy the more affordable iQ Neo 7 Pro or spend some more money for the OnePlus 11R? We'll find out in this video. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track It English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Now, let's start off by talking about the phone design. Both of these do not have any unique identity. The Neo 7 Pro looks very similar to previous iQ phones, whereas the OnePlus 11R looks very similar to the OnePlus 11. Now, with respect to the materials used in the construction of these phones, you've got a frosted glass back on the Neo 7 Pro. I do not think there is any protection on the rear, but on the front, you've got a short sensation UP protection, and on the side, you've got a plastic frame. Now, on the OnePlus 11R on the rear, you get a frosted glass finish as well, but this one's got Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the rear, therefore, it feels more sturdy for sure. But on the front, you've got a curved glass panel with no glass protection on top of it. And the mid frame is again made of plastic, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. Now, when you're talking about the in-hand feel of both these phones, since the OnePlus 11R curves and blends into the mid frame from both the sides, it feels slightly more planted in the hand. Compared to that, the Neo 7 Pro feels slightly wider. It's also very comfortable in the hand, but the 11R feels slightly more comfortable. And when you're talking about the functional elements, you've got the power button and the volume rocker, yes, but on the OnePlus 11R, there's the alert slider, which we have spoken at length about, and you also get an infrared blaster now. On the iQOO Neo 7 Pro, you've got an infrared blaster. Of course, there's no alert slider on this one. Now, both these phones have a SIM card tray at the bottom, which accepts dual nano SIM cards. There's no SD card support. And at the bottom is also that USB Type-C 2.0 port. Now, considering both these phones have a really good processor inside and are generally more performance oriented, I expected USB 3.1 because then it becomes easier for you to, you know, connect to a larger monitor and maybe then play games or do HDMI streaming as well. Now, at the bottom, you also get a single speaker grill, which doubles up with the earpiece as a stereo speaker setup on both the phones. By the way, I should mention this, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro also comes with IP52 rating. The OnePlus 11R doesn't have any official IP rating. Now, overall, when you look at it, if you've got the curved screen, better in-hand feel, and the alert slider, on the OnePlus 11R, you've got an IP52 rating on the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. And also, you've got toughened glass protection on the front. So, basically, there's nothing really separating the two. I feel that when I'm holding the OnePlus 11R in my hand, it feels slightly more premium. That's about it. But otherwise, nothing separating the functional elements of the design of these phones, at least. Now, the OnePlus 11R has a 6.74-inch curved AMOLED panel. It's got a refresh rate of 120Hz and a touch sampling rate of 360Hz as well. More importantly, it's a 1.5K resolution panel, so it's got a much denser pixel density as well. On the contrary, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro has a 6.78-inch AMOLED flat panel, which is a full HD plus panel, and it's got a 120Hz refresh rate and 360Hz of touch sampling rate as well. Most of the parameters are matched, but it's a flat panel. That's one thing that I need to keep in mind. So when we tested the display side by side, HDR content or HDR tuning is done way better on the OnePlus 11R. By the way, you get HDR support on YouTube and Netflix on both the phones, which is a fantastic thing. Now, as for the color accuracy, you've got a DCI-P3 color gamut professional mode on the OnePlus 11R. You've also got a pro mode on the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. Both of these displays are tuned really well for color accuracy for somebody who wants to maybe edit pictures on the phone or even videos for that matter. You can trust it for, you know, giving you the right kind of color rendition. But there's one advantage in the Neo 7 Pro, and that is the fact that you get PWM dimming of 2160Hz. So if you're somebody whose eyes are sensitive to high refresh rate displays in low brightness because there's a little bit of a flicker that you can see, then you should definitely pick the iQOO Neo 7 Pro because there's no such PWM dimming on the OnePlus 11R. Now, when you're talking about peak brightness, when you're watching HDR content, you get 1300 nits on the iQOO Neo 7 Pro and 1450 nits on the OnePlus 11R. This is a difference you definitely cannot tell in daily usage for sure. You take it out, both these displays are extremely bright, extremely legible. But one thing I noticed in my testing for sure is the fact that the auto brightness tuning is way better on the OnePlus 11R. iQOO has this tendency to keep the brightness at much lower settings than what is out in the environment. The ambient light sensor hasn't really been tuned properly, if you ask me. Now, I must mention this, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro also does come with an instant touch sampling rate, which goes much higher than the regular touch sampling rate of 360Hz. It goes to 1200Hz. I don't know if you can tell that in daily usage though, but it's a spec that's there on paper for sure. Apart from that, there's an extra display chip for game frame interpolation. Essentially, what it can do is in certain games where it runs at 60 FPS, it can actually bump up, uh, you know, the frame rates to 90 FPS or 120 FPS, depending on which game you're playing. Anyway, when you're talking about the display, you also want to round it off with the multimedia experience. So you've got Dolby Atmos support on the OnePlus 11R. Clearly, it sounds richer, more detailed, and has more bass compared to the iQOO Neo 7 Pro's stereo speaker setup. Take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think.
Also, one more thing is, if you're an audiophile like me, and if you use a pair of truly wireless earbuds that supports high-resolution Bluetooth codecs like LDAC and LHDC, both these phones work with these truly wireless earbuds. Absolutely fine, no problem there. Overall, when you look at the display, I feel that the display is slightly better tuned on the OnePlus 11R. Of course, it's a curved panel as well, so a lot of people might think that it feels more premium in the hand as well. I'm not really a fan of curved panels per se. I like the flat panel on the Ico Neo 7 Pro, but I still feel that the OnePlus 11R has a slight bit of an advantage when it comes to the display experience. Let's talk about the performance. You've got Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside both these phones, LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage as well. In synthetic benchmarks in Android 2 version 9, both these phones score over 1 million points. And in Android 2 version 10, you can expect a score of over 1.2 million on both the phones. And even when you look at the Geekbench 6 cores, they're very similar in terms of numbers that you can see on your screen right now. There's not really much separating the two per se. And we also ran our regular CPU throttling test where we engaged 40 threads for 30 minutes. And the IQ Neo 7 Pro returned a CPU stability score of 85%, the 11R returned a score of 80%. Anything above 80% is very, very good. So again, nothing really separating the two. But in our 3D Mark Wireless test test, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro does tend to throttle the GPU performance when you're continuously pushing it for performance compared to the OnePlus 11R. So of course, the OnePlus 11R did have a better GPU stability compared to the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. Now these are synthetic benchmarks, but in our real life Genshin Impact gaming test, where we game for 30 minutes continuously, we noticed that the average FPS was very similar similar on both. But the 11R did get slightly warmer than the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. Now, this is something that we noticed with the 3D Mark Wireless test test as well. Essentially, iQOO stays slightly cooler, but it throttles more compared to the OnePlus 11R, which lets it become slightly hotter, but it doesn't throttle when you're playing, uh, you know, continuous gaming sessions. When you look at the performance tuning of both these phones, they're almost equally matched. And especially when you're looking at gaming performance, both are really, really good. And in everyday performance, if you're looking at it, the way the software has been tuned, I feel that Oxygen on the OnePlus 11R is slightly smoother, slightly faster compared to the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. But then again, I mean, it's not too much of a difference. And considering the iQOO has a gaming DNA, the Neo 7 Pro also comes with features like advanced gyroscope controls and motion controls. And of course, that display game frame interpolation chip is also present, which means that if you're a gamer who plays a lot of BGMI, Call of Duty, trust me, it's better to go with the iQOO Neo 7 Pro over the OnePlus 11R. But if you're somebody who wants a great performance generally and which can also do good gaming, then the 11R is good enough for you. Now, when you're talking about performance and the battery tuning related to it, both these phones offer very similar battery life experience. What I noticed is that you can get up to six to six and a half hours of screen on time on regular usage, which also includes a little bit of gaming, which means that both these phones can easily last you a day with some you know, extra battery left in the bank as well. And what's also surprising is the fact that you get really fast charging speeds on both, 100 watt on the OnePlus 11R and 120 watt on the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. So you can charge these phones from zero to 100 in about 25 to 26 minutes or under that as well. Again, very evenly matched, I'd say. So when you're looking at battery performance, charging performance, all of that, again, very equally matched. But the iQOO Neo 7 Pro is more affordable. Again, I have to underline that. Now talking about network performance, 5G performance on Airtel and Jio is fantastic on both. I have absolutely no problem. Of course, Jio has been acting up lately. There's been a terrible performance here in Pune at least. I, I've had like a lot of call drops on 5G especially and the 5G performance was not up to the mark. But then again, I mean, it works well on both the phones when it does work well. But OnePlus is a bit of advantage when you look at the other network and radio features because the 11R actually supports Bluetooth version 5.3, whereas the iQOO Neo 7 Pro only supports up to 5.2. Now, both these phones also support Wi-Fi 6, but the OnePlus 11R goes a step ahead and gives you support for NFC as well. Now, NFC is something that I have been using a lot lately. Are you somebody who also uses NFC a lot? Let me know in the comment section below. For what all reasons do you use it? I'd love to know that. Now, up until now, it's a very closely fought battle between the OnePlus 11R and the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. And you will always feel that, you know, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro is much more affordable, so why you should spend more for the OnePlus 11R. And the main reason for that is the software experience. Because at OnePlus, you get Oxygen OS 13 based on Android 13, and on iQOO, you get Fantech OS 13 based on Android 13. The first blow for iQOO is that OnePlus actually offers you three years of software update promise, and four years of security updates as well. In comparison, iQOO only promises two years and three years. 
And apart from that, you know for a fact when you're using both these phones side by side that OnePlus definitely feels more premium. Oxygen OS definitely feels more premium compared to Funtouch OS, which is very unrefined. The way the notifications look, the way the notification shade falls, the kind of design, the UI design that has gone into it is definitely not as refined as Oxygen OS. That about on the OnePlus 11R, you do not have bloatware installed, so you do not have hot apps, hot games, all of those kind of apps that you do get on the iPhone 7 Pro. Of course, you can't uh, you know hide it or disable it or switch it off, but it's there and when you're spending that kind of money for a phone it feels like a little bit of a letdown so basically the extra that you're paying for is for better software experience now yes of course oneplus's software experience is great iq software experience is not up to that mark but cameras let's find out so the major difference between both the phones is the primary camera sensor. You get the IMX 890 on the OnePlus 11R, whereas you get Samsung's GN5 on the Ico Neo 7 Pro. The rest of the camera setup is the same, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 MP macro and 16 MP selfie camera. Now, when you take pictures in daylight, both do look good, but if you take a closer look, OnePlus tends to have tad bit more details, but it's also over sharpened. And the same is true even for the IQ. But the over sharpening does work in favor of OnePlus because it looks more crisp and detailed generally. Now, when you're talking about color science though, IQ and OnePlus both do not have any accurate color science as such. Both have punchier colors, but IQ is even more punchier compared to OnePlus. IQ has a little bit more contrast, which definitely helps in the favor of the whole scene that has been recreated out here. Also, one area where IQ clearly beats OnePlus is in HDR processing because it uses Vivo's HDR processing. And you can see that the shadow region has better details and the highlight has also been controlled well, which is very impressive. It's not like the OnePlus 11R has bad HDR or anything, but it's just that IQ does it slightly better. Now, if you're shooting your friends or your family, family members and if you're shooting it in even lighting conditions, both do not offer great skin tones. In fact, they're very inaccurate. If you want good skin tones, you will have to spend more money for the Nothing Phone 2 or something like the Pixel 7a or the Pixel 7. Now, if you look at the 11 hour sample, the skin tones are generally off and it has a tendency to add a little bit of a whitening effect. On the contrary, on the Neo 7 Pro, you do get that red skin color, which is the biggest concern for many camera algorithms. Now, when you're shooting against the light uh, in HDR situation, OnePlus brightens the overall image and the color of the shirt is completely different from what it actually was. And apart from that, it also adds bloom around the face, which has been a problem with most OnePlus phones. IQ's processing is slightly more natural. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. But when you're talking about portraits, OnePlus has done a really good job with the 11R. I was surprised at how well improved it is uh, in terms of portrait algorithm. You get good color reproduction, the edge detection is good, and the bokeh is even better than IQ as well. But it is in low light conditions when you were shooting with both these phones that we were completely taken by surprise. We actually thought OnePlus's Nightscape algorithm will be better than the Ico Neo 7 Pro, but it's better not to go with preconceived notions because the Neo 7 Pro does a better job. Now, in these comparison samples, if you take a look at the shadow region near the engine of the bike, the picture from Ico reveals more detail than one from OnePlus, which is significantly darker in comparison. In the next image, the sample from Ico also is much brighter. It has more exposure and definitely better than the one shot by the OnePlus 11R. So yeah, which is clear proof that Ico does better than OnePlus in low light processing. Now, when you're comparing the ultra wide angle samples from the 8 MP cameras on both these phones, Ico looks better in terms of colors and details compared to OnePlus. Even the HDR processing is much better compared to OnePlus. When you're shooting ultra wide angle pictures, what you're looking for is color sense consistency and both these phones do not offer any good color sense consistency. So it's off when you're looking at the pictures shot using an ultra wide and primary side by side. In low light, once again, the night mode on Ico does a slightly better job compared to OnePlus. So you do get slightly brighter pictures, brighter ultra wide angle pictures from the Neo 7 Pro compared to the 11R. In selfies, you'll notice that the skin tones are much better and closer to true to life on the Ico Neo 7 Pro compared to the washed out colors of the OnePlus 11R. Not only that, the Ico sample also looks sharper and has more details as well. And when you're shooting against the light in a more harsh condition, Ico's image once again has better colors and skin tones are better than OnePlus 11R as well. So overall, when you're shooting selfies in daylight, whether you're shooting against the light or in even light, the Ico Neo 7 Pro's processing is generally better than the 11R. In fact, even in selfie portraits, Ico proves to be better than OnePlus in terms of the colors, the details, the bokeh and the edge detection. Low light selfies on the other hand are kind of bad on both, but since the OnePlus 11R can take night mode selfies, the image definitely looks much brighter than the Neo 7 Pro. Now, both these phones also have a 2 MP macro camera, which I don't think anybody needed or wanted, they could have just used a better resolution ultra wide angle camera and used it for macro pictures. But then again, they will persist with it for some odd reason because then they can pad the specs 
they look okay the pictures look okay now you can shoot 4k 60 fps videos using both the phones and the stabilization is generally better on the 11r compared to the neo 7 pro but the neo 7 pro's dynamic range performance is better than oneplus and the colors are slightly more punchier compared to the washed out look of the 11r coming to sound recording the oneplus 11r sound recording quality is much better also the oneplus 11r captures higher bit rates as well Overall, I feel just because it has more details and uh, you know the stabilization is good and the sound recording is good, the 11R is better suited for video recording. But HDR performance is slightly better on the Neo 7 Pro. This video sample is shot using the iQOO Neo 7 Pro and the OnePlus 11R. This video sample is shot using the iQOO Neo 7 Pro and the OnePlus 11R. Now, using the ultra wide angle camera, you can only shoot 1080p 30fps videos on both the phones. Again, OnePlus has slightly better details than iQOO and the stabilization is better as well. Now, in low light video, both are equally bad, but iQOO has a super night mode which drops the resolution down to 1080p 30fps. What we noticed is that it does bring out a higher ISO and therefore there's a lot of noise as well in the footage. In comparison, if you did actually shoot 1080p 30fps video uh, in night using the OnePlus 11R, it's of better quality compared to the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. So overall, when you look at it, clearly the OnePlus 11R's video recording capabilities are better than the iQOO Neo 7 Pro, that's for sure. I was of course talking about the rear camera still now for video recording, but you can also shoot 1080p 30fps videos using the front camera on both the phones, not even 1080p 60fps is possible, which is a bit of a letdown for sure. Now what we noticed however is that OnePlus's video quality is not as good as iQOO in terms of colors, HDR processing or the stabilization. So if the 11R was good with video recording using the primary camera and the ultra wide angle camera, iQOO does it better with the selfie camera. So overall when you look at the camera performance again it's a bit of a mixed bag. There are certain scenarios where the iQOO Neo 7 Pro really does shine and does better than the OnePlus. For example in selfie video recording or in selfie pictures or even when you are actually taking pictures with the primary camera camera in low light or sometimes HDR pictures as well. On the contrary, the 11R does offer much better video recording using the ultra wide and the primary camera. And apart from that, it offers a lot of sharp details when you're actually shooting pictures with the primary camera in daylight. So since it's so confusing between the two, I can't really pick one winner or you know one phone as a better camera phone. But if you look at it, the iQOO Neo 7 Pro does offer this kind of a camera performance, which is almost equally matched with 11R in many scenarios for a much lower price. So the general feeling that I got while using the iQOO Neo 7 7 Pro and the 11R side by side is both are very similar until you talk about the software experience. Because if you look at the design, the display, the camera performance, uh, the kind of overall performance that you get with these phones, there's very little separating the two in certain scenarios. The IQ is better in certain scenarios, the 11R is better. But one area where the 11R unequivocally beats the Neo 7 Pro is in the kind of premium software experience that you get and the longevity of software updates as well. Which is why OnePlus cannot match the price of the iQOO Neo 7 Pro. And apart from that, you also have the brand price that you have to pay for considering the fact that OnePlus has a slightly better brand value in India. That's a given. So between the two, if you ask me, I'd say pay a little more and get the OnePlus 11R because again, uh, it's more premium in terms of experience. But here's a fun fact, there's another phone, the OnePlus Nord 3, which competes with the iQOO Neo 7 Pro in terms of pricing. And that's almost as good as well. Of course, it's not as good as the 11R, but it's almost up there. So OnePlus does keep the competition very hot. So which one would you pick? Would you pick the OnePlus 11R or the iQOO Neo 7 Pro? Let me know in the comment section below. And I hope that this video has helped you in making the right purchase decision as well. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.